Good morning everybody, the day after the World Cup final. Yes, I am wearing my World Cup winning French kit of this World Cup. And yes, it somehow doesn't feel quite right and that says everything about this final. Um, it is similar to last time around, uh, France was in the final, in, I mean the Euros where uh, ahead of the game I was more for France and then when once the game went on I went into Portugal's camp. Uh, here I stayed um, probably more neutral but I thought that Croatia at least in the first half was the better team. They had a very strong showing and I didn't necessarily like how France with one shot on goal got two goals. That's what I don't like. I mean yes super efficient but totally against the run of play to me and yeah soccer is not the fairest of sports and in the final uh, it kind of makes it a little bit less um, how to say deserving it's probably the wrong word I think France over the entire tournament was the best team they were not the flashiest team they were not endearing themselves to the fans uh, that's for sure their style of play was very restrained, very calculated, very, um, yeah, I don't know, efficient. I think that's the best play, the, uh, the best word to describe for us performance. It was super, super efficient. <coughs> Just a second. Excuse me. Uh, I've rarely seen a more efficient, te efficient team at, at the World Cup. Um, I think Germany in 2014. They had one great showing in the first game where it also went all their way. Then second game they were kind of lucky against the US. This was a game marked by horrible weather conditions. And you know, the US team, uh, typically US team solid but nothing uh, fancy. So for that reason, yeah, this was a victory they should get. And then they were, had a lot of trouble against Algeria where they adjusted and then managed to get the win. But yeah. And then they showed this against France, they showed the efficiency that is needed if to win such a tournament. Uh, against Brazil they pounced on the few chances, on the chances that they had and got ahead to a 5 nothing lead because Brazil totally fell apart under the pressure. Uh, you know, it's maybe not exactly the time, uh, but just one thought out there, the 7-1, famous 7-1 of Germany. It's always a story of two sides. Um, is it that Germany was that good or is it that Brazil was that bad? And after lots of deliberation, I think Brazil was that bad that day. Uh, and Germany just needed to be uh, solid and take, take care of the chances that were given to them. And then yeah, in the final, yeah, it was an even game. Um, at that final, I said it uh, yes it to my wife who was clearly more in the Croatia camp. Uh, I think I was I, I was really then during during the when I saw how Croatia is fighting, I really felt sorry for them, especially that they went down. I, I didn't necessarily like how France won. I'm not sorry that France won because I think that I can justify. But I was a little bit sad how France won because I think Croatia really, really, really showed that they deserved being in that event. Uh, if there were any doubts ever, this was this was the showing that we wanted to see. We saw it already against England in the second half. Uh, they are a world-class side, period. Yeah, so I, I was sorry how France won, uh, especially how the first half went. The free kick, the probably shouldn't have been won then yes maybe some naive defending on the Croatian part and there you have won nothing France was for the first time in the opposing half it was at least it felt that way uh, and then yeah it continues uh, Croatia <laughs> gets the equalizer France gets the second time yeah was a corner kick and yeah stupid penalty and that's how it went. So that was one part that I that I didn't like the final. But I I actually when one was was two one, 
I found myself thinking, yes, it's the way it went was not right, but it was an enjoyable final. Especially when Croatia scored, I really thought, yes, this is exactly what we needed. Both teams scoring, the game is a little bit more open now, and you could see that France was nervous. I saw some uh, grades uh, on a local um, site here, and the grades were just, uh, I don't know, horrendous in a way. Uh, there are people that want to grade uh, players, but as soon as a player scores a goal, he gets an excellent grade. I, you know, I don't want to grade players because uh, an Angola Conte, he didn't have the greatest final, but he is such a valuable part to his team, tireless runner, but he's not the flashy player that everyone will point out. Um, yeah. Perisic, for instance, he was outstanding against England, but he took a while to get warm. Uh, in the final, yes, it was clear that he will score the goal, but he was also involved in the other goal. Uh, having said, so Perisic was involved in two goals. Of course, one was uh, the penalty, so, and so was Mandzukic. The two heroes against England had kind of a mixed final. Both scored for their team, but both kind of at least assisted. Uh, two vital goals for France and yeah I'm not really okay that the first goal is given as an own goal of Mandzukic yes he deflected in such a way that um, the goalkeeper could not Shubasic could not uh, get a hand on it anymore so I understand that but you know the shot taken that was 90% Griezmann for, my, for what's worth for me uh, so yeah, slight deflection. I'm actually starting to like the way hockey, the NHL does things. That there are no angles. That the last player, attacking player who touched the goal, uh, who touched the ball, uh, gets the goal. So um, I think I like that almost a little bit better than doing an angle. I mean, it needs to be blatant, and for me, this was not a blatant angle. A blatant own goal is really if you want to clear the ball and you hit it in your own net. That I think is a that's a blatant own goal. There I have no problem with if you know miss tackle. Uh, that one yesterday, yes, I I called it immediately when I saw it. Yeah, this this must have been an own, own goal because the only French player there was so far 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 away that it clearly was it was clear that it went of a Croatian guy, and then it was Manchukic, yeah, and. Yeah, the Perisic penalty, again, was it given uh, previous to this World Cup? I probably would have railed against it, but uh, the referees were so consistent in what is a handball in the box and what is not, that there's no discussion, this was one. I feel horrible for Perisic. He probably does too because it's a reflex. You don't. Uh, this this was just a split second, and yeah, you get the penalty call against you. <sighs> Bad luck, but you, again, the ball was played in such a way that it was bound to be dangerous. Yeah. Again, the first half, Croatia. I don't want to say ran out of luck, but it was very unlucky for Croatia to be. Uh, down at that point when you really you had more of the game at least for uh, the you know layman observer of soccer it was that Croatia took more initiative and yeah even for me I, I'm not a genius I, I don't see the tactics I honest with that but I've watched a lot of games and you know I appreciate a good defensive play and for me that's kind of the point when you can appreciate good defense uh, then you really understand the game uh, and I honestly thought that France was nervous this was not the solid France team that we've seen before they were not cl as clinically I think the young squad was a little bit taken by the occasion at least that's how I feel uh, about it and for that reason I think uh, yeah, Croatia was dominant, but uh, also Croatia was a little bit more naive. And that's the one thing that they probably have to take onto their shoulders. But having said all, all that, uh, it was exactly the type of showing that you want to warrant 
this Croatian team, they needed to be that way. Uh, to be the loved outsider that they wasn't they, they were in the final. And it also is kind of indicative of the pressure ahead of the game. Croatia has already achieved everything that they wanted to achieve in this World Cup and more. So they were up and above already done with the mission. Yes, if you're in that final, you want to win it, and you could see it in the faces. I mean, when Luka Modric got the trophy for best player, why do they do that? I mean, it's not like Messi, because uh, Messi went in to win it. Modric, of course, went in to win it, don't get me wrong, but you know, uh, he can feel a little bit pride, and then there's the president of uh, his country standing there and hugging him. But you could see on his face, this was not the golden trophy that he wanted at that point. This was the one time to really make a big dent on the world stage. Win the trophy for a small, small, small country. And yeah, it feels odd that they do it that way. I think they should have a ceremony afterwards. Uh, just announce the winners. Yes, it's nice to have the trophy for the winner, but uh, at the stage where you're kind of disappointed and then you have to go up on the podium again, you already got, uh, yeah, it just doesn't, doesn't feel quite right. You want to have the, the winner smiling, there were no smiles. You saw Mbappé, he got the uh, award. He was all smiles because he has won it, no, 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 not because he won the individual trophy. So for that reason, yeah, that could be better, done better by FIFA. Uh, everything regarding the ceremony can be done better. I mean, this was the most botched victory ceremony and I have to say almost ever since 1998 I felt that the victory ceremonies were not even even the one in 94 the first two victory ceremonies that I got was the one when Maradona got the trophy and he was I think the first player to receive it he got it he raised it and it was all smiles, everyone was uh, super happy for him. And this, this is the one picture that's etched in my, in, in my brain of that final. If I haven't seen the video, I couldn't even tell that Germany was playing in green that day. Uh, it's that far removed. Uh, I, can't, I can't even remember the goals. I, I remember our neighbor uh, firing his air pressure gun after every Argentinian goal. That's what I remember. I don't remember much of the game per se, but what's etched in my brain is Maradona holding the trophy and lifting it up and then seemingly not let, let it go. But this is the traditional way of doing it. The captain gets the medal, gets the trophy and then all the other players and they can uh, lift the trophy. Uh, and then I think it was very well done in 1990 when the players of Germany kind of formed this circle on the, on the field around Mateus. Matthäus was in the center, got the trophy, lifted it. And for me this is also, uh, as much as I didn't like Germany winning uh, that particular World Cup, I really thought it was Italy's and not Germany's. And yeah, Argentina disgraced themselves there in that final. But that was well done. That was really well done and I don't get it. You don't need the podium and then you need to bring uh, artificially the trophy in there do it right. I don't get it. Uh, at this time with all the rain. The rain, uh, the players don't mind. But have at least something there. Have some umbrellas. I mean, this should be much faster and not have Putin be the only one uh, under the umbrella uh, for uh, what felt an eternity. At that point, Macron, and I really should get her name right, but yeah. The, uh, the Croatian president were so drenched. I mean, they surely didn't mind. Uh, it was a fun time to be there. But yeah, botch ceremony. Uh, the other thing that they had was botched. When finally, finally, uh, Infantino went through the players and to give the trophy. Then they have the shot of Yoris lifting the trophy. What do you see? Security people running across the uh, across the field. Boy. Again, the players won't mind, but this is the enduring image of that of lifting the World Cup. The only image that the idea of Yoris lifting the World Cup is 
that's where the security people are running across the camera. I'm sorry, it's just, uh, I expect more. I, this, is, uh, this ceremony should be planned better, I'd make it timely, it seems like an eternity there, they were waiting for it. Uh, you could have made a whole analysis of the game, you just saw people hugging, uh, yeah, it's, you already had enough of the emotions. Um, that left a sour taste in my mouth. Now, while I have still a few minutes to go to work, that's all I want to say about the final. Now, uh, France was a worthy winner. Again, they were not the flashiest team, but as a team, they worked wonderfully. And the latest after Uruguay, I really saw that Deschamps, he had control of this very, very young squad. Uh, they were really young. There were no children on the, at the ceremony. Usually at such games, but maybe not at the, maybe not the FIFA World Cup, but I think I've seen it also at the FIFA World Cup that at least uh, afterwards the children were there of the players and the wives. I, I want to say it, uh, Fernando Torres had his children down when he won the World Cup. Uh, anyway, I always liked it and now since I am a father, you know, I, I fully enjoy having children around because this is something you want to share with your children, with your family. Um, so yeah, but this French girl, it got it down to me, they are really, really young. I mean, uh, imagine what, what is up for them. They were already a really good squad and now uh, with such a young team winning the World Cup, uh, Deschamps said it in the in, in interview, it's, uh, it's unbelievable, some of them are 19 and they are World Cup champions. The French squad that won it in 98 was a much, much older squad. Uh, much more grizzled veterans there. Uh, this squad played like veterans for most of the tournament, but they were not. Uh, it is amazing to me that such a young that, that you can win the world the World Cup with such a young squad, and maybe that could be uh, Indians undoing for the future. I still think that England will make it to at least the final, if not win it all at a point very soon. Uh, now that you have a chance to win an international trophy every year if you're a European team, thanks to the Nations League, and I'm surely going to make a longish video about the Nations League. I'm actually getting excited about it. Uh, I think there will be a chance for England to win it. Uh, I think the Nations League at first seems like now uh, not a secondary but tertiary trophy but I think that the Nations League will eventually uh, become the second most important one. That's my gut feeling. Okay, World Cup. So I think France were worthy winners, Croatia absolutely worthy finalists. Both teams ahead of the tournament were not rated top, top, top. France always was said to be the talent, most talented squad but everyone had doubts about Deschamps as a coach. He didn't need to do much technical coaching, he needed to be a man manager and you know devise uh, a good tactic. But I think uh, he, he has complete control of that dressing room and I think um, during his reign he always got rid of the players that were not, uh, that were a disturbance. And I'm thinking now especially of Bonsema uh, and others as well, I mean Ribéry said he, he he doesn't want to play anymore, he wants to retire to World Cup, out with him. So he got quickly rid of players that could be uh, disturbant and I think that cemented his uh, status as the absolute boss of the team. And that is I think a good thing to have. Uh, just make sure you are the absolute leader. And then if you have young players, they are in awe. He was the captain of this French squad. He is a natural leader by himself and then, you know, he makes the right moves. But uh, I always had the feeling that he's both. He is uh, on the one side having a hard hand over the squad, but also he is um, giving out praise and showing his players that, he, that they are appreciated. And this is really, really important, especially for a young group, group of players. This is not something easy to achieve. Uh, I, I know this from teaching classes where it's not to that point of view but you know 
you gotta if you want to take control of a room a group of people there are certain tricks that, that you need to do and at a much bigger extent you need to have this as a coach Croatia worthy absolutely worthy I didn't like the showings necessarily against Denmark and especially Russia but in the group stage they were outstanding then they had maybe two week games against England once they took control and willed themselves onto that game there was no denying Croatia anymore so that's at least the fourth game where they were uh, great and then in the final they were absolutely they made this final what it was they made this a final to remember um, well, this will be a long remembered final I'm absolutely sure and given that those teams were not the flashy teams that everyone expects uh, that's what made this final great I was absolutely excited that there's a small nation in there and this nation had nothing to lose and that's why there was more open play and they took the game they tried everything and that's what I, that's what I loved about Croatia I mean Croatia uh, I hate this phrase meanwhile especially used in German uh, the, they're the champions of the heart yes they are you know they will they will be mostly they the final will be fondly remembered because of Croatia's play not because of France scoring four goals this will be remembered for Croatia making this a great game and all credit to them I'm really really I was when I thought about which jersey to wear I was really thinking about shouldn't I wear the Croatian jersey honestly but then you know when when but not today do you wear this jersey that was kind of where I decided but I really really thank Croatia for making this a great final for having this great of a tournament and for finally showing their promise they should have played at least in one more final I think 2008 was the time 10, 10 years ago uh, thank you Croatia also thank you for Belgium let's talk about uh, Belgium and England are uh, also worthy semi-finalists yes England was in the easier bracket but you gotta make it to the semis and then you ran in a better team uh, the, uh, the awards again I think Aydan Azar was a little bit better than uh, Modric in my mind but I think Modric is a worthy winner uh, I think either one of those should have been it um, and yeah maybe they want to have the player there it's better to give the trophy to a player that is present if you hand out the trophy yeah. uh, Thibaut, Thibaut Courtois yes uh, deserving so I wanted to give it to Pickford mainly because I guess uh, that England finally can feel that they have a good goalkeeper um, but you know Joris Courtois even Shubasic were all outstanding goalkeepers I think Courtois I didn't like necessarily his play against Japan um, but he was outstanding against Brazil he also made great saves against France and yeah so I can get it I can get on board with that you want to give it to a Belgian player too to kind of recognize them young player I mean that was running away for Mbappé at any time I mean he's 19 and the way he dominated against our, our Argentina I mean the funny thing is he only has two or three uh, scenes every game where he really shows off that he is has superior speed um, so it was a little bit after what he did against Argentina it was a little bit underwhelming what he showed that in the, the other games but you could see at any, any time that he really is the dominant player of uh, his generation so far and at that age showing that maturity the only thing he should stop imitating Neymar that was one thing I haven't mentioned so far I didn't like it at Uruguay he kind of made some theater Alex the same thing against Belgium he has doesn't need, 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 need to do that he's such a likable person uh, for his age incredibly mature uh, in his actions and words uh, that this doesn't fit the character at least the, the one that I have of him uh, if he has good guidance and cuts out those things he could be a real real super super superstar for years to come yeah I think uh, on my way home I probably will make 
a more broader review of the World Cup, kind of a legacy thing where I think the World Cup is going, how, how to rank it among other World Cups and so on. Um, but those were my final thoughts on the final and yeah, considering the champions overall. Hope you enjoyed this video, my ramblings <laughs> on the drive to work. Uh, if you did like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to. And yeah, I'm gonna talk to you again soon, give you more thoughts. And I'm surely gonna do some more statistical stuff and probably review some jerseys as well. Up until then, talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.